Coming right up, Straight Talk with Art Levine. Our guests tonight, co-authors of The Ethics Challenge, Mick Euclea and Bob Stone. Also joining us, Bart Davis, the race director of the upcoming International City Bank Marathon. And closing out the show from our friends at Community Hospital of Long Beach, Tammy Alvarez, the chief nursing officer, and Glenn Madeline, executive director of the Community Hospital of Long Beach Foundation. All on our Straight Talk show tonight. Opinions expressed in the following program do not necessarily reflect the views of Charter Communications nor its sponsors. We recognize our obligation to present opposing points of view by responsible spokespersons. For information, please contact the director of program. She stands in the face of evil and will not lose hope or faith. America, the land of freedom, is still the home of the brave. Great Talk is brought to you in part by Southern California Edison. For over 100 years, life powered by Edison. The Press-Telegram, your local news leader for over 100 years. And Long Beach Magazine. Coastal living, city style. <laughs> Join us for tonight's edition of Straight Talk. And now your host, Art Levine. Good evening and welcome to Straight Talk. Our first guests on the show tonight are friends Mick Euclea and Bob Stone. Gentlemen, welcome to our show. Great Thank to you. be here. Thank you. They are co-authors of a just released book called The Ethics Challenge. Ethics is a subject near and dear to my heart. Uh, Mick, as some of our viewers may know, is the founder and generous donor of uh, the Euclea Center at Long Beach State University, where I teach, and does a lot of work in leadership and in ethics. And Mick, we're so glad to have you on the show. Great to be here. My wife and I are very privileged to be involved with the center, and uh, she's a major part of that as well. Tell us why you and Bob wrote the Ethics Challenge. We wrote the Ethics Challenge because it is a challenge for people to follow their good intentions. And we think that people know the right thing to do because there's ethical knowledge, but then you need the ethical courage to really follow through and turn that into ethical behavior. And a lot of times people are put in positions where there's lots of pressure and they don't quite have the courage, I guess we could call it, to, to follow their good intentions or to deploy their best selves and we think that they want to do that so this is the challenge and this is what this book is helping them to do so Bob the challenge is not knowing what to do but doing it it's actually doing it it's it's closing the gap between what most of us believe uh, we we know what's ethical but we don't always behave that way and the challenge is to close that gap and how do you recommend in the book that we meet that challenge? Well, I think the first thing you need to do is, is to be aware of it. You have to think about it. Um, you have to decide whether what you want in life, what kind of person you are, what kind of person you want to be. And the first step is to embrace your purpose. Figure out what your purpose is and, and embrace it. And if, if your purpose is to be ethical, uh, we can describe how to advance that, how to help you along that way. There are a lot of competing interests, and there is a price to acting ethically. It can cost you money, it can cost you your job, it may even cost you your life. 
It can. Uh, but at the same token, people need to understand that doing the right thing, you can find all kinds of, kinds of reasons for doing the wrong thing. Rationalization. Yes, cycle. and we say rationalization comes from two words, rational and lies. <laughs> they're, they're, they're good sounding, but they don't make sense. And yeah. really the bottom yeah. line yeah. is that you have to sometimes do the right thing because it is the right thing to do, knowing full well that in the long run it's going to serve you better, serve society better as well. At the end of the day, Bob, what you really have is your reputation and uh, the money that you made by cheating and stealing, I don't believe will well serve you and you'll be remembered by not how much money you made by cheating other people, but what kind of life you led. Well, that's how you'll be remembered and while you're living, what you have is your conscience and whether you feel good about what you did yesterday or what you did this morning. I personally believe that a lot of the alcohol abuse, drug abuse, physical abuse, and other things are caused in part by people doing things during, and medical problems are caused by people doing, the, during the day, things they know they shouldn't be doing. Quite frankly, uh, particle physicists and, and uh, psychoneurologists have gotten together and they call this psychoneuroimmunology. Uh, easy immunology. for you to say. Easy, easy for me to say. The whole point being is that your immune system, absolutely, your immune system is weakened or strengthened by your ethical conduct. I think so. And you sleep it's better at night, don't you, if you're doing the right it's thing? It's a yeah. fact. It's a yeah. fact. It actually really? strengthens your physical immune really? system. Sure. Anytime you have conflict in your life, it weakens your immune system. Fascinating. So they've, they've discovered that that actually works. Psychoneuroimmunology is I what it's to called. Into that. And it works, it works together. If you would like to meet both of these gentlemen, they are having a book signing at Barnes & Noble on Tuesday, September 29th from 4 to 6 o'clock. They'll be there. You can actually meet them. You can obtain signed copies of the book, which I look forward very much to reading. What would you say, bottom line, Bob, to people who are facing today, tomorrow, next week with ethical challenges? I think the. The simple thing is how can you explain your behavior to your children? Or if you're too young to have children, how can you explain your or behavior to your mother? Or, to, or too <laughs> old. Um, if, if you can feel good about what you've done, yeah. then you've probably done right. And you're at peace with the world. Right, and, and we have some exercises that people can do as well, like we, we remind people not only to embrace a purpose, but test your excuses. It's not the first mistake that gets you into trouble, it's the second. So don't rationalize it, test it, admit it right up front, you were wrong, and move on. Don't make it worse. I love the subheading of your book, The Ethics Challenge, Strengthening Your Integrity in a Greedy World. Correct. If I can translate slightly, how to behave ethically even in an unethical environment. In a pressurized situation because it's a fact and we talk about harnessing your moods as well because you need to know what you're capable of doing when you're under pressure. Yeah. And that's when the rubber meets the road. So if yeah. you can harness your mood, moods and know what, what hooks you and know the emotional force field that's there when people get together, it's strong. Yeah. Uh, you can do that then this will help you act out on your good intentions much more. But you need to know that it's there, and if you're not aware of it, it'll hijack you. You bet. Well, Mickey Clay, Bob Stone, thank you so much for taking the time to join us on Straight Talk, and I look forward to reading your book, and uh, think ethically.